this particular video episode, we're going to focus on electrons, quantum leaps, energy, light, and photons. Building on what we addressed yesterday, we have the idea that atoms are surrounded by orbitals. Orbitals is where we're going to find our electrons. So atoms are always surrounded by these orbitals. That's where we would look to find electrons. Our next point is we can say that electrons are inherently lazy. Electrons want to be in the lowest or most stable energy state. This is known as the off-ball principle. Unofficially, we'll say it's called the lazy boy recliner principle. The lowest energy state for our atoms is known as the ground state. Kind of like the ground floor in a building. It's the lowest position that an electron can find itself in. And our last point is the concept that electrons can only move quantized amounts of energy up or down. What this means is that electrons can move, if they take in energy, they can go from a low energy state to a higher energy state. Or if there's room, they can go from a high energy state down to a low energy state. But the jump in energy is a very specific quantity of energy. It's an exact amount of energy, which is why it's known as a quantized amount of energy that the electron will move up or down. So if we have an electron such as this that's in the ground state of an atom and some energy comes in from the outside and the energy could be in the form of light, it could be in the form of heat, friction, electricity, that electron has the possibility of jumping now to a higher energy state. This is now an excited state for the electron rather than a ground state. So this electron wants to jump back down and when it goes back down, energy is always emitted in the form of light. That's how energy is given off when electrons jump from a higher energy state to a lower energy state. Depending on the energy of the light that's emitted, we can see different colors of light given off. If it's visible light, it'll be in the Roy G. Biv color scale. The red end is low energy. The violet end is higher energy. If it's a little bit higher than violet, we get into ultraviolet light. If something's lower than red, that would be infrared light. Above UV, we have such things as X-rays and cosmic rays. Below IR in energy, we have other things like radio and microwaves, or other forms of light that can have be given off by jumping electrons. The distinction between our different types of light, lower energy and high energy, is based primarily on the wavelength of light that's being emitted. In this case, the wavelength of our light would be something that would be appropriate for an orange color of light, where we have a longer wavelength. Longer wavelength would be a lower frequency, which is also then a lower energy. Whereas the violet light, we can see we have a shorter wavelength of light. Shorter wavelength means we're going to have a higher frequency, and a higher frequency corresponds to a higher energy of light that would be getting, being emitted by an electron jumping down from a high to a low energy state. To recap again, if we have some energy comes in from an outside source, and the energy coming in can be heat, light, electricity, friction, and the electron absorbs that energy, the electron would jump from the low energy, or lazy boy recliner position, jumps up to a higher energy state. In the now high energy state, akin to doing something such as a wind sprint, the electron wants to jump back down, returning to the ground state, following the off-ball principle to fill any low energy slots for electrons. When it does this, the electron will emit energy, but the energy given off is specifically in the form of light. So we've got a couple different scenarios. One, we have an electron at level four, and one at level five. Let's say the one at level four makes one jump down to level one. Whereas one in five makes a small jump, a medium jump, and another jump returning to the ground state. The single large jump in our first scenario 
would release a larger quantity of energy and go on from level four back down to level one. A larger quantity of energy would be reflected by a type of light such as possibly violet, which is a low wavelength, high energy light. Whereas in the second scenario, the small first jump would release a small amount of energy, which might be a longer wavelength of light such as red. The second jump being a little more energy, a bigger gap that it's jumped, might be a higher energy with a slightly shorter wavelength such as orange. And then the last jump would be a slightly higher type of energy might be green. What the person viewing would see would be what the blend of the red, orange, and green light appear to the human eye. Now, the amount of light given off in any of these jumps, though, is given by the equation, equation E equals H nu. Now, this particular equation, E equals H nu, gives us the energy that's in a single photon of light. Now, when one electron makes one jump from a higher to lower energy state, it releases a single photon of light energy. So in this first case, this one electron making one jump back to the ground state is releasing a single photon of violet light. Whereas in the second scenario, the first jump the electron's making a small jump, which releases a small quantity of energy. That'd be a single photon of red light. The next jump releases a single photon of orange light. And the last jump releases a single photon of green light. So the first one, it's one photon of high energy, violet light. The other one, it's single photons, a total of three photons. But we have a red, orange, and green photon of light to give us our total energy release as we jump from level five back down to level one. Now the equation E equals H nu, the E stands for energy again, specifically energy in a single photon of light, which comes from one electron making one jump. The H is something known as Planck's constant. Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 negative 34th, and the unit is the joule times second. And the nu, kind of the squiggly looking little V, is the frequency of the light that's being released. Now our equation E equals H nu, if we want to use wavelength of light instead of frequency, it would be H times the speed of light divided by the wavelength. Essentially the equation is giving us the difference between the high energy state and the low energy state. Now H again refers to Planck's constant, V is the frequency or nu, the frequency of light, the speed of light. Now keep in mind we have to use meters when we're doing this. It's 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And the lambda, kind of upside down Y symbol, represents the wavelength of light. Another equation to find the energy, E equals H nu, where we have this one where we can use, this is N high would be the energy level that the electron started at and it's excited or high energy state and low would be the energy level that the electron drops back down to. The RH near something known as the Rydberg constant, just 2.180 times 10 to the negative 18th joules. Let's take a moment, go through a sample problem. Here we have an electron makes a quantum leap from energy level four down to level two. We're looking for what's the energy released by this particular quantum leap made by this electron. Now we can use the equation E equals H nu, which is also the negative Rydberg constant times one over N high minus one over N low squared. Now our N high in this case would be one over four squared, our higher energy level. We can subtract from it the low energy level, which would be two, one over two squared would be the low energy level that the electron dropped down to. So here's our setup to solve for the energy released by a single photon of light. We have our Rydberg constant, one over four squared for our energy high, one over two squared energy low. Upon calculating, <clears throat> the answer that we get for a single photon of light jumping from level four to two would be 4.088 times 10 to the negative 19th joules.
The next question asks us to find what's the frequency of this particular light. Well, our equation E equals H nu, the nu represents frequency. Rearranging, we have energy divided by Planck's constant will give us the frequency that we're looking for. Solving for our frequency, where we use the energy from the previous part of the problem, and we have our Planck's constant, we get a frequency of 6.170 times 10 to the 14th. The seconds of the minus 1 here means cycles per second. That means there'd be 6.170 times 10 to the 14th wave crests would pass a point per every second. Next and final question would be find out, well, what's the wavelength of this particular light that's released? It says find that in meters, and also nanometers, which is a unit of measure commonly used for light energy since the wavelengths are so small. Now to approach this problem, we use a relationship from physics. This is for any type of wave energy, be it light energy or it could be sound energy, waves and water. The speed of the wave is equal to its frequency times the wavelength. So we have the speed of light C is equal to nu, the frequency, times the wavelength, lambda. Rearranging to solve, we get that the wavelength is equal to the speed of light divided by the frequency. So we have 2.998 times 10 to the 8th meters per second divided by our frequency. Key thing here is the speed of light we're using is in meters, so that means when we get our answer, it's going to be something in terms of meters for our wavelength of light right now. Solving for our wavelength, we get 4.860 times 10 to the negative 7th meters for the wavelength of this particular light. To convert our answer to nanometers, we just have to multiply by a conversion factor. Nanometers are billionths of a meter, so it's 1 times 10 to the 9th nanometers are present in 1 meter. Multiplying this out, meters will cancel, and we've given our answer in terms of nanometers. Finishing the calculation, we end up with 4.860 times 10 to the 3rd nanometers for the wavelength of our light in the unit of measure, the nanometer.